Now, we're now going to study a special kind of system called a linear time invariant system. These systems are relatively easy to analyze, and it turns out that many practical systems can actually be approximated by LTI systems. The first thing we're going to study is what happens when an LTI system, such as this, I'm going to just draw it as LTI over here, has an input, which is the complex exponential input of the, of the form k e to the power st, k e to the st, where we recognize that s is a uh, complex number, t is time, and k is some scalar multiple. Uh, and we've already studied the signal, and we know that it can represent anything from a constant to an exponential to a sinusoid or a complex sinusoid. Okay, so we want to know what happens when an LTI system is given a complex input. What does the output look like? And of course, this is going to be an uh, analysis problem. So let's say that yt is given by h of x of t. And of course, in general, these can be vector functions. And for now, we're going to ignore the vector part and just focus simply on the scalar version of it, but the concepts apply to the vector function as well. So since we know that xt is given by ke to the st, so we know that yt is given by h of ke to the st. And that's I'm just substituting for xt over here. Now let's say I'm going to scale it up. I'm going to scale it up by a factor and the scale factor is a very specially chosen factor, which is uh, given by e to the s tau. So there's no need to get confused about it. Uh, as far as we're concerned, tau is just some constant. It doesn't matter what it is. And we uh, and this is a tau is independent of time. So as far as uh, Time is concerned, it's, a, it's just a scalar constant. Uh, it happens to be a complex scalar constant, but nevertheless, it's a scalar constant. And so we know that if you multiply the input by this, so if you're going to take h of e to the s tau k e to the s t, that's going to scale the output in the same way because it's a linear system. So the output is going to be e to the s tau y t which uh, which is uh, fairly straightforward. Now, of course, on the, uh, this is going to be uh, nothing more than h of e to the s t plus tau. And that's just because uh, of exponentials being added. Uh, and however, this over here, if you look at it, is a time-shifted function. What you've done is you replace, it, you replace t with t plus tau. And because it's time invariant, we know that this is going to be actually y of t plus tau. Because uh, we, we, we realize that if the input is xt, and we're going to replace it, or k to the st, and we're time shifting it by tau, then the output is going to be time shifted by tau as well. It's going to be y t plus tau. And so we get this equation over here, which says that e to the s tau yt equals yt plus tau. And uh, this is going to hold for all time. And in fact, it's also going to hold for t equals 0. If that is the case, then we can say that e to the s tau y0 equals y of tau. Again, uh, that's uh, just substituting t equals 0 over here. And now we're going to do something, which is uh, we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to tau. So d by d tau of this over here, e to the s tau y0 equals d by d tau y tau. Why? Because if... Um, if it's true that the equations are true, if these two functions are true, then the derivative is going to match it every time as well. And we can substitute the, on the left-hand side. It is, uh, it's just nothing more than uh, s y zero y zero uh, e to the s tau. 
and on the uh, and the right hand side is going to be d by d tau y tau. But this function over here s sorry uh, e to the s tau y zero not that part over here I made a mistake but um, this this part over here we just said that that's y tau we just showed that over here in the previous step. So we can substitute for that, and we get uh, y tau equals d by d tau y tau. And this is a very straightforward first-order differential equation. And using very standard techniques, we can show that the solution to this, uh, which you can read out as yt equals d by dt of yt, is nothing more than yt equals f of s e to the st, where s uh, f of s is some function independent of time. It's something independent of time, independent of t. So it's some function s, and because uh, when you do, when you when you take the derivative of any function f of s with respect to this, this is going to be uh, so this is going to be a zero. So I'm sorry, a mistake over here. That's going to be s because I still had that s that I forgot over here. So, um, uh, sorry, uh, I'm messing this up here. So we, what, what we're saying is s y tau is dy ds tau. And so s y tau is going to be this. OK, so now if we have this, then the solution of this differential equation is y t is e to the f s e to the s t. And now let's take a look at this over here. We are saying that if the input is k e to the s t, then the output y t is going to be f of s e to the s t. Now, that is really very cool, because we're saying that if the input is a complex exponential, that's what this is over here, is a complex exponential then the output is actually a complex exponential as well. It has a, a pre-multiplier of f of s. If you ignore that, e to the st is just a complex exponential where the scalar k has been replaced by f of s. So in other words, if you take an LTI system and we give it to as an input k e to the st as the input, then this one is going to give us an output fs e to the st. And so we're taking something which has the pre-multiply k and has the pre-multiply by f of s. And so if you give it the input e to the st, then by, uh, by linearity, this means that the output of this is going to be fs f. OK, let me draw that properly. Um, f of s by k e to the st. And so this is, again, a, a scalar independent of t. It's a function of s, but it's independent of t. And what you're saying over here is that we are taking this input over here and just scaling it with the scalar by the scalar co constant f of s by k. And so we, uh, if you're familiar with linear algebra, what we can say here is that the uh, input is for the special input e to the st, an LTI system acts uh, as a scaling, and therefore e to the st is the eigenfunction of the system. And the eigenvalue is fs by k. And the, the eigenvalue, meaning the value that it's scaled by, is the eigenvalue. And this is really cool, because uh, all we know about the system is it's LTI. And yet, just from the fact that it's LTI, we know that it has an eigenfunction of the form e to the st. And so uh, this means that let's take a very complicated function, which is really weird. If I can represent this as the sum of values, OK, e to the s i t for some set of values i, or k i e to the s i t, then for the, because I have a linear function over here, if I can take this and I put this into an LTI system, what am I going to get? I'm going to get basically sigma i 
fs by ki e to the sit as the output. And that comes straight from linearity and the time invariance. So, so I don't need to know very much about the LTI other than how to get what fs is, which I can solve using this equation over here. When I solve this differential equation, I find out what fs is by setting the appropriate uh, conditions. But the beauty of this is that any arbitrary function that can be represented as the sum of complex exponentials when put into an LTI system is going to result in the individual scaling of each of the complex exponentials by the eigenvalue fs by k sub i. And so this motivates us to take uh, uh, this very seriously. Can we represent arbitrary functions in the form of sums of complex exponentials? And in fact, that is the basis of the Fourier and the Laplace transforms that we'll study. Now, I want to caution you that I've gone through these steps fairly quickly. And uh, each of these steps over here is uh, done just so. If you miss out anything, uh, it's not going to work. So you have to be very careful to follow this derivation over here. So I'll, require, uh, I'll uh, suggest that you take a look at this derivation here and in the, in the book. Uh, but uh, each step is actually by itself very simple. But the uh, outcome of this is this quite beautiful uh, statement that we can study uh, the output of an LTI system by decomposing the input into the sum of complex exponentials. And that's uh, what we'll study in just a bit.